All right. That the drum intro is always interesting to me. So this, interestingly enough, this is the original version of I'm an Adult Now that we recorded. This is not the one that was on our first album, which is called Love Junk, uh, produced by Todd Renger. And this was one we just did on our own. There was, um, we started the band, and you know, we're just trying to get shows, and just like every other band in Toronto. And I, um, I so we had a friend, his name was Scott the Smith, and he had a little studio in his basement, just like a 16-track Fostex. And it, it, I mean, it was a, stu a sort of a studio. It's not like now where anybody who has a computer has a studio. This was like he had, a, you know, a, a console and a tape machine and all that kind of stuff. But it was 16 tracks, so we thought we should go down there and record a demo so that we have a demo so we can play music to these club owners so they know what we sound like. And so one afternoon we went down and we recorded four songs at his studio. and. Um, but he didn't really have the facility to record a drum set per se. And so our drummer had these, what were called, they were called Simmons drums. They were one of the first electronic drum kits. And so he played these electronic drums and then we overdubbed all the cymbals. But when you hear that drum intro, it sounds weird. It doesn't sound like a normal drum kit because it wasn't. So that's the first thing that always strikes me when I hear this version of the song. So this is the song, this recording was interesting because we had these four songs and so we started trying to get gigs and then I had a friend, his name was Nello Giran and he worked for the National Film Board but, um, and he said, hey, we should do a rock video. That was kind of something that was happening back then. I mean, much music really wasn't very old back then, neither was MTV for that matter. And so, and so he had a friend who had a camera that had, and he had a little spare film. I had a friend who was a video producer in just their burgeoning video market. And so we just kind of collected some friends together and we went on onto Queen Street and we shot a video for this song. But it, this, it was funny because we kind of listened to the four songs that said, so which song do you think would make the best video we listened to all four? I think this one would. It wasn't like, oh, this is our big hit that's going to change our lives and propel us into superstardom all across the world. It was just like, oh, this seemed like it's going to make the best video. So we, we shot a video for this song and we handed it into Much Music thinking, well, hopefully they'll play it on their independent um, uh, um, show and then they put it into full rotation. So yeah, this is the guitar solo. And this is me just trying to be as weird as possible. And so yeah, I mean, I wasn't, I wouldn't say at this point I was a super accomplished guitar player. I was a really good rhythm guitar player and I played lead guitar, but I was always trying to find some different thing that wasn't like sort of standard blues kind of thing, even though this was a 12 bar, which is also an unusual thing about this song, is that it's kind of a mutated 12 bar, which wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily hear that much. But I think that was because I sort of got a, my start as a live musician in the sort of punk days. And so there was an idea of like rockabilly and stuff like that in those days. And that's probably what gave me the whole 12 bar thing here. Um, but yeah, the video became sort of like an iconic piece of Toronto. Um, there's a lot of stuff in that video that's gone from Toronto and so a lot of people see it and they feel very sort of nostalgic about it. So anyway, how this record came to be was we did the video and Much Music started playing it but we had no record. We didn't have a, a record out. And so we'd go into a record store and people say, hey, where's your record? And I said, I don't know, it's, we don't have a record. They said, well, people come in here every day asking for, I'm an adult now. I said, you should make a record. So we pressed up like, you know, uh, uh, you know, a thousand copies and we got a friend of ours to design a jacket and we put it out and they just sold out. And so then we did it again, I think. It was a, even a different jacket than this one. Um, and, then, and then that sold out and then the rec there was a company called The Record Peddler and they took it over and they, they, they started selling it like crazy. And then this is the Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers finally said, okay, we're on this now. And so Warner Brothers ended up releasing this single and then eventually we got our deal with Chrysalis Records. But yeah, the, the, this is the Warner Brothers version um, that was remastered and it was just, uh, it had a real, this had a really long and long life, this song. So, kind of worked out for me. <laughs> I mean, hearing a song on the radio is one thing, but hearing it from the car next to you at a light, like saying, where's it coming from? And we were playing it in the car and we heard it again sort of out of sync next to us. It's wow, like that, that was, you know, when, when that happens, stuff like that, it sounds kind of silly, but that's like when you think anything is possible. Storm Thorgerson, who did all the Pink Floyd album covers, and, and he was a director, and we felt like we were on a movie set. Yeah. We had horses, we had reenactment soldiers, you know, and we're just... We had a woman left in a skit, children running <laughs> children out. Children running out, yeah, that's the maid of the mist, right? 